Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to ESL Arena here at PAX Australia 2015 for the Oceania Smite Regional Championships. Today is Championship Saturday and we are going to find out a little later on who is going to win the lion's share of the $65,000 prize pool and guarantee their spot as Oceania's representative at the 2016 Smite World Championships. Our schedule for today begins with our third place bronze match. After that has been decided, we will move through for a Paladin show match at about 12.30. Once Paladins has concluded, we will be seeing our grand final between Avant Guard and Direwolves. Whilst our grand final match is being saved for a little bit later, that does not mean that this match right now is not important. These guys are finding it out for their largest ever prize pool, $20,000 guaranteed between third and fourth place. This third place match is being played between SYF Gaming and Integral Nation. To bring you all the action, it is my pleasure to pass you over to Adonis and Nightfall. Hello everyone and welcome to the Smite Oceanic Regional Championships. Like Sandman just said guys, both these teams unfortunately lost in the first round of competition yesterday, but they're still battling it out for $20,000, which is still a, a good portion of the prize pool today. Yeah, a massive amount and it's the most amount that they've ever earned. None of these teams have ever played at a LAN environment such as this. They've, yeah. they've only just met this week as well. Uh, for me, you know, these were the two teams that actually did not qualify automatically through the Pro League. These were the teams that actually battled out through a wild card process. Integral Nation heading up against SYF. And these were the teams that honestly, uh, people coming in thought it would just kind of be one-sided. Uh, while they did lose to the top two seeds, there were some interesting games, very close games. Uh, the first game we opened with, Integral Nation, Tomahawk and Rob Diggity, the, the Dijon brothers, just went off against Avant-Garde. It was absolutely amazing. The, the map control was, was so well played. And against Avant-Garde, the number one seed coming out of the Pro League, they just played absolutely out of their minds. Unfortunately lost in game number two as well. Uh, so it was a 2-0 yesterday, but uh, based on their play yesterday, it was uh, absolutely, absolutely amazing. You, you can just take a look there as the graphic ends. 28 win percentage for Integral coming into this competition. I mean, they were uh, on the razor's edge for the longest time. They actually didn't even qualify into the Pro League. This was a team who actually got in because another team disbanded right yeah. before the first week. And they show up and they finish near the bottom of the Pro League and everyone kind of wrote them off. But so far, they have done a phenomenal job. Uh, the improvement that they have shown just in the past month alone at the end of the Pro League, at the end of the wild cards to where they qualify for fourth, has been astronomical. Yeah, I think that's mainly due to the, the new jungler, well, new, uh, Fonke. He came in straight after Pro League and all through the Challenger Cup, they just played so much more confidently. And they also got a new coach, Lydia, okay. who is with Paradigm in EU. Uh, yeah, so uh, same with, you know, Avant. A lot of these Oceania teams are bringing in some of the North American European talent from the coaching areas, and it's really improving their game. I mean, we saw the improvement that these two teams have made alone. I can't wait to see what we're going to, who's going to represent uh, the Oceanic region. But yeah, uh, $20,000 on the line for this third and fourth place match guys uh, we're gonna be getting into the game shortly SYF on your screen right there let's talk uh, a little bit about them yesterday they fell to dire wolves but game two was a uh, pretty back and forth yeah and it was mainly due to that uh, gold fury steal that magnet was able oh, to pull that up was with so good. space and time yeah and then he comes through uh, he gets the kill onto Richard Castle and they just snowball from there uh, and that's, you know, you can actually see their biography right there on screen. Uh, team fights, that is the core of this team. Individually, their laning phase, maybe not the strongest to match up against opponents, but when they get into team fights, it is, it is on. And like you said, objective control, that steal from Magnet. Uh, both these teams actually ended up stealing Gold Fury, stealing some objectives yeah. away from opponents. So I think we're going to see a lot of team fighting from both these, and maybe not so much lane dominance that we saw back uh, yesterday. It'll be interesting to see. I'm really looking at Divine here in the solo lane with his Kronos powerhouse. He didn't play it at all. No one banned it yesterday mm -hmm. as well. So 
I'm really, really looking forward to what he's going to be putting there in the solo lane. And you can see Liquid Renegade as well. He's the captain of that team. What do you think you'll be looking for? He'll be looking for there. You know, I, I think SYF, I, I think we'll, in picks and bands, start to see pretty tanky lineups at the start. We actually saw that a lot of Wukong bands, a lot of Giannis bands, and like Jing Ten, Athena, Ares, all very highly lauded picks. Uh, for me, though, I'm looking at the Ho Yi pick in this Hunter matchup. Yeah. Rob Diggity versus Redox side, actually. Uh, both Rob, very good at Rob Diggity played so well yesterday. Him and his brother Tomahawk combined in that lane, made a lot of plays. I, I would say they were actually the saving grace in their match versus Avant Garde. Yeah, and it's that brotherly synergy. These guys know known each other almost their entire lives. So they Well, I, I mean they're brothers. I hope they didn't yeah. know each other their entire lives. Well one of them's older, right? <laughs> That's true. He had a couple of years. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to be getting into picks and bans here shortly, guys. Game one, Integral Nation versus SYF for the third place match in the Smite Oceanic Regional Championships. All righty, first ban here, Sun Wukong. Okay, 100% ban rate throughout this uh Throughout the championship, yeah, yep. both uh, every single team has banned him in, in all the matches we saw yesterday. Hell taken out as well. We didn't actually see too many healing compositions like we've uh, really seen in North America and Europe, but still a pick you don't want to let through. Yeah, the closest one to that was Guan Yu, who was played in the yes. jungle mostly yesterday. So. Jack, Jack played him in the solo as well a little and, bit. One and, of the and Ro as well. Too, yeah, and so. Ro pay, yeah. So yep. there, was, there was some switch up. Uh, we were talking about it before. Jing Tin, first pick coming through for in, uh, Integral Nation. SYF respond with Giannis and Gab. Oh, this team fight is already looking very, very good here for Sif Gaming. Uh, SYF Gaming, sorry. And they've got Gib as well with that. Uh, Gib Shield cleanses any form of CC. Ho Yi, though, picked up for Rob Diggity. This is, oh. if, if you have a all-star player on your team and that player is a hunter, right now Ho Yi is the god you lock in. It's just a 1v1 monster. You have uh, your hunter's mark. It's, it's just giving you bonus damage, bonus penetration, and a lot of stuns in the kit in the direct 1v1 matchups. Redox side is going to have a lot of trouble handling Rob. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see this duo lane matchup as well. And Zing Tan in support, do you reckon? Uh, I think it's an ambiguous pick, right? Yeah. I, I think we can see it in multiple roles, and uh, that's uh, a lot of times why we see these first picks in Jing Tens and Athena, because they can be played in different positions on the map. We saw Athena, Guan Yu, uh, and Jing Ten be played in different roles all yesterday. Agni also picked up there, very, very versatile uh, in the mid lane. You can stun off any other ability, and he's got that poke and burst potential with that ultimate too. Guan Yu and Anher now locked in here for SYF, and the third bands came through. That was Odin and Bastet. Team compositions being rounded out here. Integral looking for their final pick. They lock in Sylvanas more than likely for that support position, although we have uh, occasionally seen it over in the solo lane, although I, I'm pretty sure it's lost every game it's been in the solo lane. Uh, yes. At least in Europe. Yeah. Europe yeah. Europe plays it a lot, and it just, it's not, it doesn't work. I'm they try. I'm liking the team fights coming out of both. Oh, Fenrir picked up. Oh, I'm excited to see this one. So we've got Zing Tan, Ho Yi, uh, Agni, Sylvanas, and Fenrir for the side of Integral Nation. This team fight is going to be so explosive. Uh, there's a lot of big circles, right? Yeah. <laughs> Zing Tan, Agni, and, and Sylvanas alone, a lot of AoE damage, and this is what both these teams thrive off of. They love the team fights. They're not so focused on, you know, outplaying their opponents in the laning phase, it's just making sure to get into those early groupings, those early Gold Fury fights, and making an impact. Final pick coming through for SYF. They have their mid, uh, it looks like they're looking for a jungle, I'm assuming. The Guan Yu could go jungle, and it's going to be oh. Zhang Kui, so that's actually going to be a solo lane, and that's going to that's going to Divine. Yeah, most definitely, and there's going to be a Guan Yu in the jungle as well, so we're going to see that come through again today, the sustain as well, the team fight we saw Jack play at amazingly yesterday, his teleport, the teleports were absolutely insane. Oh, yes. I, you know, I'm looking at SYF and they really don't have any lane dominators. It is 100% about the team fight. The Geb, uh, the impact just isn't there early. You could try and be aggressive, but you're not going to be doing as much as Sylvanas, you know, early on in the damage oriented place. Like you said, he has that Geb shield, though. So good in team fights, cleansing any CC on your team and uh, also immu uh, immunity knockups. Yeah, that. I'm, I'm just really, really excited to see these team fights. Ho Yi, though, in that uh, duo lane is going to be very interesting to see how Red Oxide can play against that as an Anher. Both of these AD carries are absolutely insane at boxing. Uh, Their yes. skill is just... Uh, on her versus Hoi, Reed Oxide and Rob Diggity are going to be going at it all game, I think. And I feel like this isn't going to be like the one where like both these players are going to be farming up. I think both these carries 
for these teams are the players that they want to prove they're better than the other guy. Yeah. I think we're going to see a lot of aggression in that dual lane, something we don't normally see. A lot of times it's kind of just a farm fest, right? Get your main carry player, get that hunter player to level 20, have him make an impact in team fights. Rob Diggity was not having none of that yesterday. No. He was all <laughs> about fighting Avant. Yeah, and it's bragging rights as well. Like, I'm going to be better than you. I'll, I can solo you, and they really probably won't want their supports at all in lane just for probably, that. I don't know. Tomahawk Tomahawk was, was yeah. rolling too uh, in their match. It, mm -hmm. This is going to be an interesting one, guys. We're going to be getting into game here shortly. Once again, this is the third place match for the Smite Oceanic Regional Championships. SYF versus Integral. And already coming out, we've got a five-man grouping over here towards the left side of the map. By Integral Nation, SYF looking for some early scouting as well. Both these teams, it looked like they just wanted a ward, but Jack, he's ready to go in. I think they're looking at Twist, but yep. it looks like SYF should be able to walk out of this one fine. A lot of positioning. Integral, they were looking for a fight, but SYF weren't having it. Yeah. Who, uh, what early game? Which it, team would you put It's the Fenrir, right? It's, the, it, you, oh, you you take, a, you take a look at the Guan Yu in the jungle, and that... <laughs> He just doesn't have a lot. He's very good at team fighting. He's very good at the Gold Fury fights and kind of sustaining in the poke wars, but he's not the guy that's going to come into your lane and gank. Not saying that it can't happen, but if you know the Guan's coming, it is very easy to get away from him. Fenrir, though, not so much. Ragnarok, you're able to, you know, transform into the giant dog, lock a single player down. Unless they have some form of CC immunity or beat, there's nowhere for them to go. Fenrir can just drag them back into the tower and they start taking tower shots. Yeah, it's, it's really that disposition that they've got that is a that is a jungle zing tan we saw that yesterday but not to great effect you know that oh okay so oh yeah you're right it's and a solo finry solo finry okay so i i everything i just said is completely <laughs> wrong it's gonna be shing tin into the jungle and this is something you know i haven't seen too much of even in ranked people it's just uh, we, we see shing tin uh have so much more success in either the solo lane or the support role uh has this been something that we've seen uh, at all in opl not at all. I mean, the meta has changed between now and, and when OPL was running. Everything that we saw in the Pro League essentially is all for naught. And Fenrir up against a Jeanquai, while the Jeanquai is ulting, and then the Jack tries yes. to use Ragnarok, mm -hmm. he will still take damage. Uh, something you got to be wary of here. Jack and Divine, you can see them matched up in the solo lane. Jack, you know, he didn't have the best lane, I would say, yesterday. Uh, matching up against iDivine, though, this is something I, I'm a little bit scared for him because iDivine was actually really controlling the Dire Wolves yesterday. We, we, we saw him solo get some solo kills in the lane as well. Yeah, up against a, the best it under tower, he was able to solo out Yada. So his, his early game potential is just so strong, and he could just snowball it all the way into that tanky Jonquay that we all know and love. So I like what SYF is doing here. They they may not have the best, you know, early game fights and, and ganks, but what they do have is a lot of lane pressure and clear, especially against the Shing Ten. Yeah. It takes him a little bit to get rolling. It takes him uh, a little bit longer than most junglers would take to clear the camp. So we're seeing SYF look for invades. Nice grab onto Twist. A little bit of damage from Rob Diggity, and that's going to force them under tower. They've pressured this duo lane very, very hard under tower, and they're going to lose a little bit of XP. You know what? This is this is this is literally just Sylvanas. And we started to see Sylvanas really fall off in that support role. He's incredibly powerful in the laning phase. He not only heals up himself and his lane partner, but he also has an AoE auto attack that clears minions so fast when, you know, most gods and most players don't have that strong of a clear. They've even given the attack speed buff to the Sylvanas for that extra wave play so they can yes. continue to pressure. A little bit of damage with that scroll on towards Jack. A little bit of poke. Not too much. It's, it's so hard to get just solo kills with Zhang. Yeah. He doesn't have that instant burst potential. It's, it's really about a lot of dot damage and a lot of sustained team fight AoEs. I don't think we're going to see too many solo kills, but I do expect Divine to continue to control that lane. Yeah, not too much aggression coming out here in the early game. Just a little bit of poke and a lot of pressure in that duo lane. Other than that, they've all just got... They're going for what they know that they can get, like the mid camps, the back camps, and all the other buffs that they can get. No real aggression coming out from either team outside of SYF. Going for a couple back camp steals. Oh. Jack, though, going in. He's looking for Divine. Oh, Divine actually has beats early. Jack could be a little bit trouble. He doesn't have a jump for eight seconds. The ghost going to be enough. No. Oh. If there was one more ghost that came out, that would have been first blood on Jack. Divine just barely missing out on that one. And Jack 
Thanking his lucky stars. So close there. What an early beads from Divine. He he just went. He came the lane with Vampiric that. Vampiric Shroud and straight into the in, into the beads. He knew that Jack would go aggressive as soon as he hit level five and had his ultimate. Uh, Jack, though, I'm sure that was uh, calculated as well. He had to have recognized the beads, but they were only beads one. So those are going to be on cooldown for 180 seconds. That's three minutes where Jack is going to be able to abuse, or we're, we could see Funke look to abuse that and gank that solo lane. Yeah, he's level six now, so he does have that ultimate when he jumps into that solo lane, he will use that uh, Whirlwind of Rage and Steel and then able to throw Divine under tower, followed by the Ragnarok to pull them even further. You know, funny enough, we, saw, we said Rob Diggity and, and Reed Oxide would be going at it, but so far it's been a pretty extended laning phase. The fact that the supports are really just starting to rotate speaks a lot to me that, you know, I think Tomahawk and Twister are like, all right, we both know that our Hunters are going to be trying to battle it out. Let's make sure that they're okay, at least through the super early game. Yeah. I'm taking a look at the builds here. There is a cooldown reduction uh, for Divine. We saw him build that yesterday when he was up against Yada in that solo lane. He really wants to heal up and get that uh, passive of protections from ex exorcism mm -hmm. uh, of, of the ghosts. Yeah, it, it, it's super important here. Uh, Mouse in a little bit of trouble. No, it's going to be Tomahawk. And this is why people do not pick Sylvanas anymore. He doesn't have any movement abilities. That's going to be first, first blood for Magnet. But Vodka, he's coming back in. Whirlwind's going to grab no one. The no horse one. is coming through. Mouse. The snipe doesn't finish him off, but Jack's rotated as well. Red Looking oxide. to pick off Reed Oxide. One more hit, he jumps away. The knockoff, the impale. Are they going to get away? This fight, it's turning. Rob digging a lot of trouble as well. He's going to fall. Falke's here. He's trying to jump away. Jumping by Jack, but it's not enough damage. One more kill. Three yes. for SYF. And oh. That's going to be a incredibly strong early lead. Red Oxide stayed alive through that entire team fight. How? What happened? How did he stay alive? Integral Nation, they just tried too hard and Fonke got no one with that ultimate. That was huge. That fight back and forth. Integral, they tried to fight into it, but unfortunately SYF found the early picks. They fought together and, and for me it was how they protected one another. The knockups from Twist perfectly timed, making sure Redoxide would get away. Redoxide also hit a, a really clutch impale in the middle of that fight yes. to make sure yeah. he could walk away and the aggression wouldn't continue onto him. A beautiful team fight coming out of Sif Gaming here. The 3-0 three, three and o now, straight after that one, after what we thought was uh, uh, no aggression in this early game. They just come out fighting. What do you expect to see now from SYF? Are they a team that's going to take this early advantage and try and, and stress it? We, we saw yesterday, uh, actually it was said yesterday, that in the Oceanic region, as soon as you get a lead, you just punish the enemy team as much as you can. You keep fighting and you just hold the enemy team back. The downside to that is because you're fighting so much and you're aggressing all, oh, as we see a Ragnarok and immediate beads from Divine. Uh, but yes, uh, if, if you do get too aggressive, then the enemy team can punish you for that. We'll have to see if SYF take that advantage. Beads one force as well. Look at this, Fonke, he's rotated in. Whirlwind, it's up. But I Divine recognizes the rotation. Fonke walked right over that sentry ward around the mid camps, and that's just going to be not a failed gank, just a gank that didn't happen. I Divine, a good map awareness coming out from him. Fonke still doesn't have a, a blink, so it's going to be very obvious to see when a giant uh, uh, axe and shield wheel wielding enemy comes in towards you to try to throw you towards the enemy team. It's he doesn't have that surprise potential. I'd have to say so as well. Jack could be in a little bit of trouble. No jump for a couple seconds. Ghost, are they going to be enough? Oh, One more. That's the second so time. Close. Divine, though, he's not giving up. He's chasing this through. Look at the rotation from both teams' card. Oh, it's tag him. Jack's like dead. Yes, very nice pickup there from Divine. Able to solo out, and we said it's very difficult for him to do that. Uh, because he's on Jean Kuei, no burst potential, but he just played it very, very well there. As we saw, through space and time did come through as well, just to get him out of there. Yeah, that through space and time, Jan is so strong. That's why we see him banned out by Fonke. Whirlwind is up. Liquid Renegade not going to get caught. No, he is. This could be trouble for him. There's a Wrath of Terror as well. Rainfire's coming through. Will Liquid Renegade get taken down? No, he's still alive. Actually, Mouse do, does pick that one up with the Rainfire. Bob trying to run away. On Stable Vortex, not going to connect. One for one, though. Or uh, just a one kill on the Liquid. And that was a big play for a Mouse. That bomb just barely hit on the, on the back end of that fight. Extremely close. And he did not want to let the same situation as when Red Oxide did get away 
right at those mid camps as we're looking that was where the fight is and now a ward just being taken down by tomahawk uh, this this warding spot is so crucial for all the teams and it's it's something we actually see on the bottom side on that order side more so than the top side of the chaos this path right now that tomahawk is walking through is such a crucial uh, crossing point between a lot of players when they rotate through the jungle that's where that first big fight broke out the three for zero so it's, it's imperative for both these supports, Twist and Tomahawk, to make sure that their team has vision over it. And they can only place two wards at once. It's very difficult. So it's, it's more team, the, the team have to ward a lot more rather than just one dedicated warder. Uh, yeah, back when, you know, players could place multiple wards, three wards at a time, it was very easy to just have the word, the map loaded and, and put a lot of reliance on your support. But now the team, they have to share the burden and make sure that vision is equal. Only 10 wards allowed for each team on the map has every player can only cap out at two. We're taking a look at the builds now. So boots for Rob Diggity on top of Red Oxide, although I don't think Red Oxide has backed yet as he's actually wow. Rob Diggity has got a gold lead on top of Red Oxide. Yeah, not not too much though. Just a small lead. 1600 though for SYF as a whole. That that's just been out farming in the couple team fights that we've seen. Yeah, the the three kills are hit nine minutes into the game. What do you think will be the next point of contention here? I, I think we're going to start to see some gold fury control. Uh, yep. uh, we may see some pinch, and if that, if the ganks are going to come, it's, it's going to be on Tomahawk, if anyone. Uh, it looks like Divine's getting Divine baited here. Awesome. There is a, a Ragnarok coming out, beads immediately from Divine. He's got that Regal Dens as well. Huge damage onto Jack47. He's forced away. There's the Whirlwind of Rage and Steel forces Divine away. But he's, he's, half -life. he's 3v1 at the moment. What is happening? And he's just taken down to about 30% HP and walks away. But, but look at this. He's taken so much attention over to the over to the solo lane, and SYF Gaming pick up the first Gulf Fury. Fantastic play coming out from SYF. Huge gank from Integral Nation. Rotate three, just trying to deal with Divine, who is not only two levels on Jack, but three levels on Fonke, two levels on Mouse. Divine right now is huge, drawing so much attention. Integral Nation, they abuse that fact, or excuse me, SYF abuse that fact and sneak the gold theory, extending their gold lead to about 3,000. And this is massive here. They're just gonna start snowballing now. But what can Integral Nation do to come back from this? I think they have to win a team fight. They're, they're gonna have to team fight, but right now they're putting so much attention to try and get Jack back into this game. I think they're honestly falling behind in other parts. Maybe look to get their hunter player, Rob Diggity, ahead. He himself, Tomahawk and Rob Diggity were the two guys for me. When this team matched up versus Avant Guard, they were the players that were going all in. They were the ones that stole the gold fury. They were the ones making the big plays. Fonke needs to put a little bit more pressure on that dual lane and just let Jack deal with the vine. Just have Jack just farm up as much as he can and make sure he doesn't drop any more kills. Oh, Fonke. It's gonna be very difficult for them to do that. And as you mentioned, Tomahawk and Rob Diggity in this duo lane, they were right beside the, go right beside the Gold Fury, but they had no idea that it was being done by SYF. It would have been really risky to walk into that jungle. True, they need it. They just need more ward, uh, wards coming through. They need vision and knowledge so that they can make the right calls. Right now though, the XP starting to fall. Eh. Integral Nation, the XP is going to start to get to them. And I'm still, I, I, I've said it already, but Divine right now, so far ahead individually that uh, this mage, right, that's just so tanky, has so much protections in his base kit, so much health and, and, and health scaling, it's going to be hard for Integral to deal with him. It's almost like you have to ignore the Zhang Kui, but it's really hard yeah. to ignore Zhang Kui. <laughs> it's, it's almost impossible, and you can't just burst him out because of the, those protections and the health. Oh, my oh. word, look what he bought. Oh, he got, oh the Mail of Renewal. Oh wow, that is this, bad. this is very, very bad. It's easy for him to get assists as well so that he can reach in after a kill gets taken with that Recall Demons with the AOE ghost coming. Yeah, the 15%, it, it's not only that, it's also the 15% cooldown reduction, 30% cooldown reduction now on Divine. He's gonna have ultimates up so often, gonna have multiple stuns and fights that typically you don't see. Book of Demons is a pretty long cooldown, but 30% less, it's gonna be on about, I believe, a 10 second cooldown with that. 10? I think it's like 15, wow. right, at base? Oh, that's insane. A little bit of aggression here in the oh, mid. Is that a grab onto the Liquid Renegade? Yes, no it is. Just, to, just, yeah, nothing. Integral grouped up under their tower. <laughs> Rob Tickety oh, uh, very quickly liquid. recognizes that he does not want to rotate into the jungle there. <laughs> and we see Mouse is actually... No, I won't, I, won't, I'm, I won't say he's ahead of Magnet. Magnet does have that Chronos Fiend and Hand cooldown reduction on the Yarnus, and cooldown reduction Yarnus is probably one of the scariest mid laners. 
it's just the fact that you have your portals up so often and you can get your team in and out. We saw that before where I Divine actually died to the tower, but this could be an engagement twist looking for the Cataclysm. Yes, the Cataclysm yeah. coming out, Media Beast from Rob Diggity. He's forced to jump away, True Space of Dime does come out. And there's the Sunbreaker as well. Rob Diggity picks up the first kill onto Twist. In oh, the back line is Divine, beautiful uh, kill onto Rob Diggity. And now Red Oxide is looking for Fonke and the rest of SYF are trying to get this one. They will secure that one. Gold Fury just a little bit too far away. Mouse. Can't do anything. He's going to be forced back. Two kills coming out for SYF, continuing to extend their lead in game one of this third place match. Uh, right now, it looks like they're all grouped up for this left side tower, though. It's uh, not only do you win the fight, but this is imperative that you take the objectives after. You steal away uh, either the camps or look for the gold tree, the fire giants. If none of those are up, you start taking towers, knocking them down, getting that map presence and pressure all across. And if we take a look at the graphs now, we'll be able to see 4.2k gold. X, uh, gold and 4.3k XP. And, it, and it's that really just, you, you can see the two drops, right? Uh, at about three minutes, there was the first one. After that, that big drop with the three kills at 10 minutes on the graph, uh, looking at the gold. And just now, it's it's been a steady decline. It's Or uh, for SYF, I, I guess, incline for them, right? They're, they're slowly growing their lead, and then they're finding a couple kills and objectives, and they're just putting that notch in. And they're starting to ladder out this graph here. Integral Nation, they need to cut the bleeding. They need to find some wins somewhere. Uh, whether it's ganks, whether it's a gold fury, whether it's just getting a tower, they need to start putting out some pressure. 20 seconds now till the gold fury does respawn, and it looks like Integral really need to set up for this one and take this one out. Sif, though, because of their lead, they can afford a more vision. They've got a better team fight. Their items just put their stats so much higher than Integral, so it. It's going to be a difficult fight here for an integral. For me, I, I keep saying his name, but it's Divine. I mean, Divine right now is so, so far ahead. He's just been abusing Jack he's in this lane. This Zhang Kuei does not mess around. And the way he's made it work really has been his phenomenal... Ooh, he's trying to go aggressive, Jack, but he Jack's can't. in trouble. He is a Ragnarok immediately. Blitz, this is uh, the third beats. time we've seen that one. And Jack, he's trying to do something, but look how much damage went down onto Divine. Close to none. Look at this Gold Fury, big grouping over the left hand side, though. Uh, I think what Divine is doing is forcing Jack back and trying to get a response from the rest of his team. Integral Nation, though, they're not going to fall for it twice. That's what happened last time. We saw them put three players over in the soul lane, trying to help out Jack, trying to shut down Divine, and SYF snuck the Gold Fury uncontested. Integral, they're just going to let Jack kind of do his own thing now, I think. I'm really, really excited to see how this team fight does play out. The mouse has to land all of his Rainfire ultimate uh, charges. He's so it, it, it's imperative that he's he so far that. behind, though. I mean, he only has boots completed, just got the Spear of the Magus yeah. online, and those are two items that are incredibly cheap. You really want to see them online at about 10 minutes, 11 minutes, not 15 minutes into the game. Yeah, it's very, very difficult here for Integral. And look at Divine. Oh, he's dealing so much damage to Jack. He does have that uh, Stone of Gaia, though, for the regeneration. And he was forced to buy that one after the warrior Tabai so that he can sustain against Divine, but Divine is just so punishing. He, I mean, he's, Jack is 0-2 right now. He, he has to make, he, he has to do things like that. He has to itemize, uh, not optimally for damage or what he would want to do. He has to itemize to make sure he doesn't give up any more kills to Divine, because if Divine gets any bigger, uh, Integral Nation, who are already struggling, are going to be struggling even more. Gold Fury continues to be a point of contention. Rob Diggity throwing out the Sentry Ward there, gaining control, but you could just see all of SYF on that minimap just roofed up, making sure they control the vision. They want to do the Gold Fury, they just want to make sure they don't throw. Uh, you know, even though SYF is ahead, they're giving a lot of respect to Integral. Spirit of the Magus now is completed for Divine. This is not good at all for Integral. It, each tick of damage on any ability is now going to reduce the enemy's magical protection. It's going to allow Magnet to deal a lot more damage. It's just such a good item for both of them. The question is, will Magnet go into the spear as well? Or is he going to be looking uh, more for that Obsidian Shard, Liquid Renegade? Not going to get caught by that bounce. Rob Diggity just barely missing that one. Divine's rotated over as well. Jack's here too. This is going to be a big fight breaking out in a second. Oh, yeah, Fonke's okay. in a lot of trouble. He gets impaled into the wall. Does he have a jump? Does he have anything? He's got the wall. Oh, he's the dead. Still massive damage on towards him, and he gets taken down. And now it's a 4v5 fight at the Gold Fury. Uh, this is something that SYF, they want to take, and it looks like Integral are going to give it up. Jack's in the mid lane. Same with Mouse. Gold Fury, it's already half-life. Yeah, and Mouse, oh, is, Mouse is in trouble to do too. something. He's forced to dash away. Nice stun on Tomahawk. Divine and Liquid Renegade. He's got that cavalry charge on towards him. Where's the damage? So much of it on towards him. He gets taken down, and that's one. The mid laner taken down. Oh, Tomahawk. Rob! Rob! 
does secure a kill onto the carry. Now Ghosts are coming find, out though. Finds Rob Diggity. He's chasing him down through space and time. Will he find Tomahawk? It does look like he will be able to eventually get him. Rob Diggity gets taken down by Divine. That's another kill in the bag for him. Yeah, who Nowhere will find to go. This one? Magnet. Now 205. Look at these slash lines here. Three three solo kills basically happened. Rob Diggity uh, and his brother Tomahawk doing a nice job at locking down Redoxide, but unfortunately they were too deep in the jungle. And now Jax, the only one alive, the only one in position. Fonka has rotated as well. It's going to be a uh, miracle if they could seal this Gold Fury. Four members of SYF grouped up. Gold Fury, 5,000. Jack. Fonke, they're ready to go in, and uh, SYF, they're kind of holding it. This could be a steal. They're, they're not doing enough poke damage. They're looking for it. They, they need Jack to try and get a massive amount of burst to steal this one out, but Divine just puts so much damage out. Can they secure it? Yes! Oh, they Jack stole, stole it! it! Jack stole the it. Liquid gonna get in a lot of trouble. Divine will take out Jack. Is Liquid gonna fall though? The percent damage not enough, but Mouse is rotated in as well. He's Liquid falls. Kill. He's chasing Twist, but he's surrounded by three members. Mouse should fall here. The question can is, can he take one? out Twist? No. Gibbs Redoxide shield. finds it, but uh, the Gold Fury still keeping Integral in it. Both these teams oh, oh, oh. Uh, so good at stealing away the objective. Syf not properly. Uh, I would say defending. The Gold Fury, but a great spell by them. 4,000 gold in the lead. SYF don't extend it. And this is this is a good look. 4,000 at 19, 20 minutes in. Not that big of a deal. Not that hard to come back from. But right now, Divine is level 19. The highest player on Integral oh is Rob word. Diggity at 16 and Jack at 16. The rest of the players, we're looking at five, six level advantages. 1,500 gold lead here for Divine on top of Jack, even after that five, Gold zero, Fury. 5-0 and 6. That, oh, that is absolutely amazing play from Divine. He's so aggressive, and unfortunately, after that Gold Fury loss, uh, just, Integral are just now going to uh, come back from this one. So far, though, it's been all SYF. The Gold Fury is still going to be keeping Integral in it, but they're going to have to do something else. They're they're going to need something uh, to help them out here. They're going to need some good team fights. They need Mouse to come online. They need Rob Diggity to come online because so far, Redoxide and Rob Diggity. No one seems to really have the advantage. I, I would say, considering there's such a massive gold lead in SYF's favor, and Redoxide is only a couple hundred gold ahead, probably should be a little bit farther. So Rob Diggity doing a nice job, I would say, uh, winning that direct matchup, but he hasn't really made an impact. He has a couple kills, but he has three deaths, and it's just not enough right now. Okay, so looking at Mouse, he's got that Divine Ruin. He's trying to shut down Divine's healing, and as well as Liquid Renegades. So. I look, at, look at what Jack built. Pestilence. He has oh, wow. no damage. He is literally a CC bot and stacked magical protections, making sure he doesn't die. And the healing, the 20% healing reduction coming out from Pestilence as well. They, they are just trying to deal with everything that SYF is throwing at them. It's, he's a CC bot, but he doesn't actually oh, have them. Look at Liquid. Single target. Liquid's there. coming in under charge. tower. Cavalry under tower. Sunbreak and Wrath of Terror do go down. Liquid Renegade, can he survive under tower? Tower shot will not kill him. Thanks to that Gibbs shield, Jack now going aggressive. He's taking so much damage, forced to jump away. There's the through space and time, a lot of damage coming out. Cataclysm as well, and Twist secures a kill onto Rob Diggity. Tomahawk gets taken down as well, and that's a two for nothing. Under tower, mouse caught by a portal. Oh, don't teleport in, Jack. Don't teleport in, Jack. Stunned against no. the tower, nowhere to go. What? Jack, unstable vortex, not going to connect, but Redoxide jumping in. He wants to be aggressive, tagged up by the card, not going to be enough damage. Jack stacked that magical protection, but just teleports into five players. I don't think that was the right move. He gets away with it, but two towers taken. <laughs> SYF find three kills. They are controlling the pace of this game. 21 minutes in, game one, looking like it's going to be SYF. Integral, they're going to have to do a lot to try and bring this one back. Uh, Mouse needs to come online. Jack needs to be doing something besides jumping in and trying to ult uh, players because right now, every single member on SYF has beats three outside of Twist. And if you're spending so much, if you're investing so much as a team, all your damage into taking out a Geb, into taking out a support, you're just going to lose the fight. And a Jotun's Wrath only just now started off for Jack47. Like you said, he was just a CC bot. But when everyone has beads and your CC is single target on your ultimate and a stun that you have to build up basic attacks to pull off, it's, it's, not, it's not optimal here for Integral. Divine could be in trouble. Level 20. You can see Integral <laughs> trying to rotate in and get Ward Vision on this gold, or excuse me, Fire Giant. Divine's not going to let Fonke do it for free, though. No, not at all. So this Fire Giant, they really need to ward up. Integral cannot lose this one. They have to get a steal on it to be able to stay in this game. Otherwise, SYF, as soon as they get it, they'll just force a Phoenix and then win the game from oh, there. Oh, my God. <laughs>
can we, can we take a, a, a quick look at Ida Vine right now? Uh, can we highlight the Zhang Kui? Uh, you take a look. He has currently 2,700 health, it looks like. Wow. He is building into an Ethereal <laughs> Staff. That's going to give him 600 on top of that. And Integral are already struggling to kill this mage. It and also increases his it's power. Gonna be, it's going to be impossible. It, 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 Ethereal stuff increases your power based on 2% of your max HP. Yes. And just from the item, that's 42 magical power. It's the perfect item for Jean Quay right now. Uh, we can see Gold Fury going to be spawning here, though, in about 17 seconds. Both teams starting to group up. It's SYF's Gold Fury to lose. And they lost it last time. Oh, they lost stuff. it last time. I mean, that Rainfire actually did a, a decent amount of damage to Magnet. But it's not enough to burst out. Not enough at all. Not at all. If he put all of his combo in, into him, I think he would have taken him down to maybe 30% HP. Reed Oxide, you can see him hiding around this corner. Gold Fury has spawned. SYF, they're looking for their opportunity. The Hunter, he's going to be starting it up. You can see Twist on that gab, looking to play zone and all of Integral. They're still sitting in the mid lane. They're trying to rotate it now, trying to counter ward it. I don't even know if they know this is going on. No, they I don't. I think they're, they're giving it up. Vision. Yeah, they, they're forced away. And Fonke, That's Gold Fury. Yeah. Easy pick up there for Sif. Game in the extend the lead if we take a look oh, at the Oh, this is bad for Integral though. They're split up. Look at Jack on the left side. Could get caught out. You can actually see he's him trying to back. And now Divine, he's... he's they're going to make a pick. Jack is forced to jump away. There's a blink. And oh, the three-man Cataclysm. Mouse, he gets burst out. Huge damage on towards him. Divine secures that one through space and time. Hits Frog Diggity. And he's going to be forced away from that one. What can SYF take from here? It's going to be the tower, but no other kills coming through other than Mouse. One, one kill, but two players solo. Three players solo. They're going to be forced to back in. You can see SYF continuing to take every objective after they find the pick. It's going to be a tier two tower here. That's 1,500 gold for the team. Take a look at the graphs. Going to be a, a big spill now. Wow. 11,000 gold lead. The last gold fury that Integral was able to steal was only 4,000. SYF have grown that lead massively in the past five minutes. And uh, Integral Nation, uh, the game isn't over, but the game is basically over. Yeah. It's going to be a miracle. Someone is going to have to make some big plays, or SYF, they're going to have to drop the game. The best thing for, Sif to, it, for, for them to do right now is to not take the Fire Giant. Don't risk a steal from Integral. Because uh, the only way back into this game is if Integral do get a team fight and the Fire Giant steal. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have to be SYF grouping up and, and really getting hit by, uh, you know, Sunbreaker, the ultimate coming up from Tomahawk, uh, the ultimate coming up from Fonga. They're all going to have to be grouped up and sit in the circles, right? Integral Nation, they're the circle team. They, yeah. they want SYF to group up, but unfortunately the fights, they haven't been grouped up. It's been picks, or it's been fights that have been spread out across the map, spread out across an area. And SYF has done a great job of making sure they don't get basically wombo combo down. SYF, they're going to be countering out the Fire Giant for now. And it looks like that's going to be the next objective they're looking for, but they might be just be baiting it, looking for kills. Divine has a Gem of Isolation. Oh, that wasn't... Oh, he didn't even go Ethereal Staff. No, but... Every single tick of damage that Jean Kui is now going to do will slow down the enemy and force them into a bad position where SYF can then chase. This item, it does so much for Zhang, who has all those dots like we talked about. The demon bag being released, uh, the card that he applies to players slowing. Fonke, they're going to be caught out here. Divine throwing out that card. Fonke, he's so slow. Slows There's five members. The there is absolutely Whoa. nowhere to go. Liquid, he's the one to pick up the kill. And he it looks exploded. like SYF, they're going to head to the fire giant. At the very least, they're looking for a fight. They've got vision of Integral, though. Integral have to be extremely careful. Divine and Liquid Renegade playing the zoning game, and that's the two people that can force anyone away at this moment. Divine gonna get stunned out. Look, look at how much damage that uh, Integral are trying to do. Divine's gonna up. fight. Heavenly is popped, but look at this Tomahawk. It's gonna be close. Fire Giant. It's trying to be stolen. Jack it's Jack stolen. Jack Fire, Fire Giant. Giant. Jack Field. Fire Giant. Redoxide jumping out. Jack running off. Divine picks up Mouse in the mid, but now it's Liquid Renegade. One versus two. Jack trying to get away. There's the leap. There's the beats. Magnet finds Drop Diggity. Three dead for Integral. Jack and Tomahawk do have Fire Giant, but right now, SYF, they're barreling down mid lane. They're looking for Phoenix. Oh, two people below. Two people alive. Uh, three, sorry, Fonka, he just respawned after dying from... Uh, 
it, from that solo lane pick, they're gonna be able to get Blink in by Bonke World, and he's trying to catch two players. He does jump in by Jack. A lot of damage, but it's not enough. Liquid Renegade pops that heal, backs up, and it's just going to be the Phoenix. Jack trying to chase down Divine, but Divine, he's so tanky, he's just kiting these players around. Mid Phoenix, one more hit, and it should fall. Tomahawk low. Actually, a lot of members of SYF low. Oh, but look at that. Divine finds Jack. Bonke caught in between five, and he's gonna be able to jump out of there. But SYF, they lose the Fire Giant. They find a Phoenix. And now Integral, what can they do? Jack lost that Fire Giant. Tomahawk, the only one with it, but he's not gonna make too much use of it other than that healing regeneration. As long as he can stay alive, he might get burst out from Sif Gaming, but Integral uh, the, just too the, far. The on Fire the Giant on the support is literally nothing. It means absolutely nothing on the support. No uh, Tomahawk is no not damage. the one doing the damage on this team. Right now it's it's Mouse trying to do something and Rob Diggity who's starting to build up crit. A lot of it's gonna be kind of rolling the dice and hoping that crit percent lands and you get some big hits on the important carries on SYF. They need to try and target out Magnet and Redoxide early in these fights. Integral. But it's gonna be so hard because Divine, Liquid Renegade, and Twist have done such a good job of being frontliners, protecting their carries. Divine can kind of just chase down anyone he wants and be fine by himself. And the twist, we, we've seen a mix between him and Liquid Renegade. Well, one player will be aggressive, looking for to, to dive the back line or, or deal with the carries, and the other player plays Peel. And so Magnet, 3-0-12, he hasn't died once. Just such a good job by SYF on protecting the players they need to. Divine hasn't died either. Two people on SYF have not died. Integral, they're so far on the back foot, I don't see them coming back at all. Even after stealing a fire giant, they lost the... Rob. Rob is just caught. That's, yeah, Rob's gonna die. Knock really up coming out from him. He was, he was just trying to get some farm, trying to get that crit online. He's gonna be chased There's to the no circle. Twist finds that one. And now four members of Integral Nation alive trying to defend this left side Phoenix. The mid Phoenix, it's pushed out. Fonke just trying to clear the wave. This is gonna, it's gonna be rough. It's gonna be real rough for Integral. Time spent dead, Rob Diggity, 258. How much just, is that? That's like close to three minutes. It's it's a long time. It's over three minutes. It's it's five minutes. Wow. It's more than five what? minutes. Wow. Is uh, it 300? Gold Fury going to be taken here. Look at Max. that damage. 27,000 oh coming out from Divine. Fonke, a mouse. They're being <laughs> chased out here. And Liquid Renegade, he's looking for a mouse. Like and shot. that stun going to come through. Beads forced by mouse. And now, now that's why they're looking to end. Yeah, they, they just need one more Phoenix here to safely close this one out. They're looking towards that solo lane, gonna take down... Uh, it's very systematic closing of the game here. They're playing just it take, safe. Take down all the I love structures it. and just close it out safely. Don't don't risk the Fire Giant getting stolen again. Uh, it's not spawning for a number of seconds. Just make sure you control the map. Make sure that Integral doesn't have farm anywhere. That when they come out of the base, they are scared to walk into the jungle. And uh, that's what they're doing. You know, right now, what if, there's one bat camp for Integral to try and farm off of. And Divine isn't even letting them have it for free. <laughs> oh, wow. So 30 minutes into the game, 21 kills to four. SYF just dominating from the get-go. That, that 3 0 team fight right at the start of the game, that was where it all started. And Integral just stealing objectives, trying to get themselves back into the game. They can't do, they, they didn't have any other choice. Uh, you know, that 3 0 team fight, that was important for SYF, but that's, for me, it's Divine. Divine has yeah. played phenomenally. He's He dominated Jack in lane. He forced Jack for his first two items to be magical defense. And he forced an early teleport out of him and early beats. Jack was just trying to live as long as he could. And Divine was so healthy. He was so strong. He was three, four levels ahead of most of Integral that he actually forced a massive rotation over that lane. And that's why I took advantage, snuck a gold theory. And it was just Divine having so much presence in that solo lane that forced Integral to deal with him and SYF found small advantages elsewhere and slowly grew that lead until that big fight at the second Gold Fury where they wiped three, took a tier two tower and made it a 12k gold lead. So this is going to be the final team fight of the game. Integral final stand here. It's sort of like Lord of the Rings like DMs did yesterday. So <laughs> <laughs> this, Last stand, this is Phoenix it. gonna spawn, Liquid Renegade gonna knock that one out and SYF, wow, they are playing it up. so safe. I love this. So much respect given to Integral, making sure they do not drop the game. Look, get this oh, bait though. Jack could be in a little bit of trouble. Four members grouped up. There's the Heavenly Pop Divine. They're looking for a mouse. There's nowhere to go, mouse. You're gonna be falling here. Funke trying sure. to throw players, but it doesn't even matter. He's under half-life. There's no follow-up. Mouse the mage, the player who needed to stay alive. But it doesn't look like SYF are even gonna risk that. They're heading straight, straight to the fire, to the giant. fire giant. You could not play any safer. There is no safer way to play here. 
they're taking everything, literally everything away from Integral Nation here. And they, Integral have no idea that this Fire Giant is going on. And look at how quickly that does go down. 3,000 life on that Fire Giant. It's going to be taken. No one even close. And Divine now, be looking for Jack in the jungle who's rotating in. Fonke and Tomahawk could get caught out. Rob no, it's Rob Diggity. Not enough. Not again, Rob. Been pale. <laughs> Unstable Vortex not going to connect, but there's nowhere for him to go. Liquid, he finds the last hit. And this is going to be it. SYF, final backs, final items, and then they're going to rush down the mid lane. They've got Fire Giant. They have no objectives on the map to take. I, I mean, look at how dominant this has been. You take a look at the towers for SYF. Uh, the solo lane, you can kind of see like a fourth of it was taken. Uh, in the hunt, in the dual lane, it's like there was a couple of attacks. I mean, that's why I have, have controlled this game front to back. Every lane, every team fight, every objective. Out, they, lost, they actually had two objectives stolen but they got so much of off of that, right? Even though Integral were able to steal these objectives, they lost three, four players each time, and then a tower, and then a phoenix, and then they would steal objectives. They just couldn't do anything afterwards. Yeah, SYF have just outclassed Integral here in every single factor. Like you just mentioned, the only thing that Integral have done is steal objectives, but when, when your best play is to steal objectives, that's when you know that you're, you're extremely, extremely they, they just have Look at these builds coming out from Integral too. There's just no damage at all. Jack stacking magical protection. A, a lot of cooldown reduction and defense coming out for Fonke. He doesn't have any damage items online, really. Mouse, he's gone into boots. He's gone into cheap items that just, they're more about the utility with Kronos Pendant and Divine Ruin. They just don't have that massive amount of magical power. It's just not enough right now. It's all going to be on Rob. Cataclysm forced out, and there's a beast from Mouse. Cavalry charge in the back line. There's the Phoenix taking so much damage, and Tomahawk as well. No one has fallen in the fight just yet. There's Rob Diggity actually taking down Divine. Finally, Divine does get killed, but can they close out the rest of the game without him? It's going to be four players. And oh, Twist pulled through the wall, and now it looks like a terrible focusing him. No, it's Jack going to be diving Magnet in the back, and Rob Diggity, he's just going to continue healing up, going and poking the players. SYF right now, they're so healthy, and they're actually going to win the game. GG. Congratulations to SYF winning game one of the third place match in the Smite Oceanic Regional Championship. Still at least one more game to play, though. This is a best of three. For me, though, that game Enough all that. about Divine. Oh, my word, he played so good. He is not going to get Sean Quay after that one. Oh, it's going to be banned. Yeah, I, I mean, he was, down. he was beating dire wolves with it, right? He was beating the second team in Oceana with it. Yeah. Jack is just, he struggled against it, unfortunately. It, it was mainly because of the aggression coming from Divine. He forced Jack into a position to build defense, and he didn't get any damage online. And you said it during the cast, he was a CC bot. But when your Fenrir is your CC bot, that is not good at all. You can see that right there, Jack. And uh, Fonke having a little talk after game one, trying to figure out what they're going to be doing. Tomahawk and uh, Rob Diggity on the far ends there. Uh, the team going to be trying to reform the strategy going into game two. SYF talking with their coach as well, standing. And it's, they're pretty happy. They're, they're pretty happy yeah, with the way they performed. There's, uh, I don't think there was too many mistakes outside of just not, uh, I would say, CCing properly, controlling the players who were looking to steal. But outside of that, they won their lanes. They won their team fights. They found phenomenal picks. They played a very respectable game, too. And the fact that they did not try and dive Phoenixes when they got one pick, right? They would just take small objectives. They would force Fire Giants. They would force Gold Furies. They made sure not to have too many risks and just slowly extended their lead to find that win. If there's something that we learned from yesterday is that Nothing in game one will ever happen in game two. In game one, Integral played absolutely amazing against Avant Guard. Yes. Game two, unfortunately, they did get uh, closed out in 20 something minutes. It was, it was, yeah. It was, it was pretty one sided. Yeah. But then in SYF's game, they lost pretty hard in game one. But then game two, they, they played so well after Magnet uh, stole that Gold Fury and they snowballed from there, but still, unfortunately, did lose there. So. Nothing in game one will ever happen in game two. And I'm wondering, can they do that in this next game? Guys, we will be into game number two very shortly here. Uh, so, yeah, these teams, uh, let's, let's, let's remind anyone who's just coming in and joining us. Uh, first, actually, we're going to look at the first blood replay. I believe this was that team fight where three were picked up here. Yeah. We're going to see how that really went down. Okay, so Mouse did get a stun. There's Liquid Green Gate, Blink, and Cataclysm. Tomahawk was taken down first, I think it was. Nice rain fire damage from Mouse. 
Magnet secured that one, and after that, Fonke tried to do his best. No one got hit by that ultimate there, and Liquid Renegade just played so well in all of that team fight. For me, though, you take a look at it, and it was really integral, right? The kid just going in one at a time. Mouse got caught out. Yeah. He was forced back. Tomahawk trying to protect him. He got caught out. Then Fonke jumps in. He's forced out. And then Jack jumps in, and he's forced out. And the entire time, SYF, as a unit, grouped together, you saw three, four players get incredibly low, but it, you know, Integral Nation, it just seemed to, the individuals were on different pages. One would go in, one would retreat, one yeah. would, one would you know, try to re-engage, and the other would be backed out or forced out. And I Divine actually played a really nice zone game in that early fight. You actually saw him force out Mouse um, and, and chase him down. And for, I, I can't talk enough about Divine and yeah. how, how well he Beautiful played. Beautiful play. Beautiful play. Is and this just his genre? Well. What, what else does he have? He's got Kronos. I'm He's looking for that. A Chrono His Kronos is absolutely insane, guys. We're going to take a look at a Gold Fury. <sighs> This was this Kronos. was the steal coming in. <laughs> I, I really want to see Fonke and Jack how they get this. You can see Twist trying to protect, but it just seems like Syf. They didn't know what they want to do. There was no one dedicated to peeling. There was no one dedicated to do the damage. You yeah, could they, see they were just kind of like super. And the big problem too was Reed Oxide was dead, so they didn't have their Hunter player, which is the primary damage for this. I believe it's yeah. just Jack jumping in, and I think he just gets an auto attack. I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure Jack yeah, just got an auto attack. Really, really hard to see there. And unfortunately for Sif, they didn't lose it, but they did win the fight after that. And they punished Integral for trying to get the steal. Oh, and, and Mouse rotated in too. He picked up Liquid Renegade, but then died immediately. It's, off, uh, that's, that's, one, that's one of the worst things when you're a, a mid laner in that kind of mid game. Uh, time frame when you hit level 12, 13, 14, when you're starting to get some expensive mage items online, uh, like Rod of Dahoudi, and, and start to build up your damage, that when you die in a fight and then come back and immediately die again, you've it's not only the fact that you've been dead for that long, but just the travel time back to lane, yeah, and you don't massive. get any experience for multiple minutes. You really start to fall behind, and we saw that happen to Mouse, unfortunately. Uh, Magnet able to find a lead uh, here and there. I'm really excited for game two, though. After that game, no way Jean Kuei is getting picked. What do you think will come out here for Integral? How do they respond after that one? It's... Uh, I don't think there's anything outside of banning the Zhang. I, I think the Zhang was just that potent. I think it just forced them to try and deal with him multiple times that uh, the team just started losing elsewhere. Tomahawk and Rob Diggity, they, they played fine, right? It's, it's not like the lane was bad. It's not like individually they played bad. It was uh, basically the team was fighting 4v5. Jack just had no impact on the game at all. He got forced out early. It was a matchup that uh, I don't know if he was, he, I don't think he's probably played that ever. I really don't know if he's ever played that. Jean Kuei versus Fenrir are two gods that really aren't highly picked. Fenrir a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's very, very confusing to see these solo lane matchups. Yesterday we saw a Bastet into a Jean Kuei, yeah. which is something you rarely ever see. Yeah, Bastet, she don't, she don't work in a solo lane. <laughs> Bastet does not fly in solo lane. Unless you're like up against a mage, an actual mage, not Jean Kuei, who's like super tanky and has a lot of protections. Yeah. And, and hell, he's not a mage, right? He's more he's, of a warrior. He's, 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 a ma he's a magical warrior, basically. Does, would, you, would you put him in the same line as Ares? You know, Guardian? With low the, damage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aries, low damage. What a joke. <laughs> oh, man. Game two, guys, about to start up the teams. They've had, they've had their chats, and it's Integral here going to be trying to form a strategy to make sure they can win at least game two, at least force the third game in this best of three. Uh, once again, for everyone just joining us, guys, this is a Smite Oceanic Regional Championships. Unfortunately, both these teams lost in day one, but there's still $20,000 on the line between the two of them. One of them is walking home with over 12000 the other with about 7500 or, or yeah, 7500 yeah. So this is still a very important match for both of them. And after this, we're going to have a Paladin show match at about 1230. I'm and excited then, for that. And then the grand finals were one team is going to walk away with $25,000 and a spot at the Smite World Championships in Atlanta, Georgia in January, where $1 million is on the line for 10 teams across the world.